Descendants of the Victorian Prime Minister William Gladstone will travel to the Caribbean this week to apologise for their family's role in the slave trade. William Gladstone served as PM four separate times during the 19th century, but it is, it is his father John who is the focus of the family's attempt at reparations. John Gladstone owned more than 2,500 slaves on plantations in modern-day Guyana, making him one of the largest slave owners in the British West Indies. In a statement, the Gladstone family described their great-great-great-grandfather as greedy, domineering and vile, whose actions amounted to a crime against humanity. When slavery was abolished in 1833, his son William argued for compensating slave owners, which led to his father receiving the largest payment equating to the modern equivalent of about £10 million. The family claim they hope to make a better future. But is this the way to do it? I'm mixed about reparations um, because... Actually, I spoke was speaking to Sharon Osborne about reparations previously, and we spoke about how the Jews were enslaved. If you go back far enough, there's always someone who has overtaken and enslaved other people. That's unfortunately part of our history. But because we were paying the slave owners' debt off until 2015, mm. so Esther, you're too young to have con contributed to this tax-wise, <laughs> but the rest of us, <laughs> the four of us have been paying yeah. for these slave owners, then actually, why am I paying for slave owners? Yes. We should be paying for the slaves, right? Exactly. So, yeah. And, and it's, it's always, it's framed as this, you know, oh, actually, we really fought to free these enslaved people. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, but they we also, do. they fought to be compensated and paid off for the fact that they had enslaved people. Well, that's the only, it's, it's that's the only way did. to abolish the system. It's, it's, it's actually, the, it's, it's the Royal Navy that actually helped stop this vile trade and hundreds and hundreds of our own sailors died in that process, and we should recognise that. Yeah. I'm not a fan of reparations, but there is in this particular family case, it does seem possibly the greatest conflict of interest of all, actually, where you've essentially got the son arguing for compensation so that his father would benefit. So that is a, it is a very peculiar case. Normally, I'm not a fan of reparations. I'm not a fan of apologising. All nations, you know, bad stuff happened in the past. We learn from it. We've got to look for it. But JJ's right. Worse, we were paying it. We were paying it off. Yeah, but I think that's, that's irrelevant. It's it was <laughs> no. It's no, really irrelevant. This is you way can't worse. Get, no, you can't. Hang on a second. This, this is, is made worse though. This 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 <clears throat> family has a conflict of interest, right? Because of the father. But the the reality is, we can't constantly say we've got to pay reparations for this and then and then Forget you pay it and then you apologise and then you've got to do it again. Hmm? There's a far worse conflict of interest. Here they are going over with their satchel of money of £100,000 where they're going to be leaving from their lovely estate, which I'm assuming was bought with all this money that they were given the reparations from. And they're saying, oh, you know, they're doing this heart-bleeding apology in public. My view is go and do something in private. Make a difference. Yeah, I was Live with the that, fact yeah. that you've got this wonderfully fortunate situation. Look... But the, the guy who's going over, he was educated at Eton. The £100,000 wouldn't allow one child to go to that school from start to finish. Good so point. Let's, let's talk about what really needs to be done if he wants to make a difference. I agree with you. I don't want to go through some heart-bleeding, oh, let's all... Because, as you say, everybody will find something. I dare say my relatives, they were chased out of Eastern Europe and various other things, and we've probably got lots of lovely paintings and art and stuff stolen over the times, land a lot. But I, I'm not interested in that. But what I am interested in, people making a real difference, and actually... Do it under the radar. That's, that's Let's keep the say, history yeah. there, learn from it under the radar. I'm going to applaud really James Max. Yeah. There, there's, oh, wow. there's a first for it's, it's, a, it's a rare moment. <laughs> it's I very know. rare. Oh, but J I'm James, really James you're is right. with him and you're applauding me. <laughs> James is right, because I think there's something really crass about making this public. Um, obviously, I do think that 100 grand is... I mean, in, in, in proportion to how much they actually received in modern-day um, sums, it's obviously a drop in the ocean. But I also think it's like giving a homeless person £10 and then filming yourself doing it. Yeah. Or, you know, I just... I think, for me, there is something inherently crass about mm. doing a public gesture and then letting the whole world see it. Because you're clearly... Like, I said this not too long ago, you're spit-shining your halo for the public to see how virtuous you are. And I just think that's not really the way I would go about it. Listen, there's a plethora of issues you can get involved with that involve, you know, descendants of slaves. There's so much you can get involved with in sub-Saharan Africa. Why don't you do that in private? I, I mean, I, I really don't understand the need for this gesture other than the fact that they just want to show how repentant they are. And for me, that's what I find distasteful and off-putting. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Um, and I don't, It's going to be weird me now quoting Berlusconi the late Sylvia Berlusconi, ah! but... Oh, where, where are you going with this? Where exactly? wow. Stay with me. He's going to a bunga bunga. <laughs> Stay with me. He did the right thing. So Italy did some horrific atrocities in Libya back in the day. Rather than pay reparations, he went there and spent 
billions of lira building hospitals, schools, roads, adding infrastructure. I think that's a smarter way of dealing with these kind of things rather than taking a small amount across and handing it to yeah. the local university. Uh, it's just gesture politics. It is it? absolutely gesture politics, virtue signalling, and as you say, I mean, what, what, what difference is that going to make? And to make a sort of big song and dance about it, it just feels, it just feels wrong empty. at every yeah. single level and completely and utterly empty.